Hey guys, and uh, welcome to my first tutorial for UE4 ArcVis. Um, today I'll be explaining you how to uh, how to use uh, UE4 for ArcVis. Um, know about the uh, pros and cons about the engine, and also how to uh, achieve a, wi a realistic results uh, with lighting and shaders inside UE4. Uh, so first of all, I'm going to go to to the Max. Um, sorry, I can't. I can't have uh, both uh, UE4 and 3D Max running at the same time. Otherwise, my my laptop goes uh, kind of crazy. So I'll start with 3D Max, um, and and this can be followed with any uh, other external 3D programs. Uh, the workflow is is pretty easy for ArcVis. Um, so yeah, I'm going to I'm going to show you quickly how I exported uh, all of these assets into UE4 and uh, then I'll fire up UE4 and uh, start talking about uh, how to import the uh, the assets, uh, how to learn the uh, light mapping inside the UE4 and a bunch of uh, several tips that could be useful for, for the ArcVis. Okay, so uh, I'm inside 3D Max, and uh, so this is my uh, project um, inside the program. So as you can see, I do have a floor plan that is just under the under the the actual mesh, so I can isolate that. So this is my floor plan that I isolated, and um, just to show you that uh, you know building uh, on top of the floor plans is extremely extremely important. And very useful if you can find floor plans. Uh, it usually gives you know a um, good sense of dimension, uh, which is uh, yeah, which is very useful. Uh, so I'll end this uh, isolation and show you the whole mesh that I have. Uh, okay, so yeah, quick overview here. I won't spend too much time on uh, 3D Max. I know that uh, UE4 is the most important uh, for you guys. But um, I just want to show you something very important for 3D Max, which is like the most important thing in UE4 is the light maps. So UE4 uses um, the second UV channel uh, for to use with the uh, light map. So the way you do that is that you apply a unwrap modifier. So I have in it a uh, in the quick shortcuts here, but uh, it's uh, if you go in the modify tab and go to unwrap UVW, you have the unwrap here. And what you need to do is switch to channel number two, abandon, open the UV editor, control A, mapping, flatten mapping. And I usually go with 0.02. Okay, and that is your light map information that is going to be used for UE4. So a quick way of doing that, instead of you know manually doing it, is that I found a pretty useful uh, plugin called um, Steamroller. Uh, and if you just type Steamroller inside Google you'll find it pretty easy so Steamroller nope uh, maybe 3ds Max there we go Steamroller scriptspot.com it's free uh, great way to use it because uh, basically instead of doing it manually I have the shortcut already installed Steamroller UV channel 2 unwrap and you do it for everything. It's so much faster. There, and now you have a flattened map for the second UV channel. So, I'll see you back on the UE4. Hey guys, and uh, here we are back inside the uh, UE4. Um, so this is my latest project, as uh, some of you may have seen inside um, ArtStation or Instagram. 
and many of you have asked uh, on how I uh, managed to achieve uh, real realistic results and I know a lot of people asked about the lighting and the setting so I'll go through that and uh, explain uh, how to get uh, realistic results uh, and keeping you know good optimization of your game because you are inside a game engine and that you always have to bear in mind that uh, you're running all of this in real time. So, uh, so yeah, this is my scene. Um, as you can see, that the, all the props that you've seen inside 3D Max have been imported here. So this is the lounge and this is the kitchen. And I can also play inside it. Uh, I've I've added this feature, but um, uh, it's very, very easy. You can just uh, import the first person template, um, remove the gun, and uh, because you don't want a gun inside the ArcVis world, that will look a bit strange. And uh, yeah, just, um, just get the controls, and uh, there you go. Um, so if you want me to explain more in details on how to do that i can do another tutorial about it uh this is just basically to to show the workflow inside ue4 okay back in the editor okay so i'm going to show you uh quickly on how to how I deal with the uh, exported mesh of 3D Max uh, inside UE4. So I always tend to create folders specifically for the mesh uh, I import. Uh, so here, oh no, that's not the right one. Uh, let me find it. Uh, mesh assets, there we go. So all of these are my assets straight from 3D Max including the folders too um, so it's pretty easy just you know export as FBX uh, and then you import them inside and you get the exact same position that you had in 3D Max uh, here so yeah later it's just a matter of importing you know assets I'm not going to go over these because that is uh, I assume that you know all of this but uh, I always try to keep it organized and name my meshes uh, SM underscore uh, for static mesh. And uh, that way, uh, I just find it easier for me to, to, to find uh, some stuff. Uh, so you can see that there is a separation here. And that if I go in this room, you can see that this room here is this room here, but it's not on the same mesh. So a, a very important aspect of uh, sorry, um, a very important aspect of UE4 is always try to separate the walls, but don't separate them too much, and that's kind of a tricky part. Um, so let me explain you why. So here I have this one single mesh as a wall and also the kitchen. So the reason I do that is um, to avoid lights bleeding to the corners of the wall or from the bottom here. And let me show you the example. There. So you see this light bleeding? Uh, that is a common problem for UE4 ArcVis people. I think it happens like systematically every single time. And that is uh, due to the walls being separated. And once you do that, uh, UE4 is kind of lost. It's like, okay, where does the light go? Uh, how do I do it with this? And that is why sometimes I cheat with doing a whole single mesh. So you can probably get away with this size, which isn't too big. But if you were to do a whole villa or something, and that every wall was the same mesh, that would be very bad. You would need a huge 
uh, light map resolution to counter all the uh, light bleeding and that's not what you want to do. I always try to separate the walls and just be very smart about it. Uh, I know that this room uh, I was not intended to continue here so I separated the wall because uh, I knew I wasn't going to use it. Uh, but if you are going to use it, um, the way you would do it is just be smart about it and um, actually this is pretty good. Um, the, the corridor would, which would be here, you would want that as a separate mesh. And if there is light bleeding, um, you basically compensate that with uh, increasing the light map resolution. So if you go click here on the mesh and go down, uh, override light map. And sometimes that can fix the problem, but sometimes it doesn't. So you just need to play around um, and see if the seams are not intersecting correctly. Um, that can cause some issues. You always need two open faces that are attached together, otherwise I think this one, uh, as you can see, uh, let me go into lighting mode. So actually this one is okay, but the problem is that uh, this portion here is uh, Let me get a slightly better. Damn, I can't. Sorry, I can't get. Okay, this is good. This wall is plain, and this has an open face, and these two inst intersecting will have some issues for sure. So always have two two walls that have open faces, um, and have attached vertex that always avoids uh, light bleeding. Uh, sometimes for the floor here. Uh, you can always have this issue. So the way to counter that is uh, the light map. Um, increase the light map or you can also check that if there is some light going through. So as you can see here this mesh has a two-sided material on it. So this basically means that this has material here, it's receiving light information from here, but also from the bottom. Okay, so I'm going to show you the quick way I'm uh, working on uh, the materials and shaders here. Um, so, once you have the materials uh, set up inside the UE4, um, I always tend to use material param parameters, sorry. Uh, so if I go onto this basic white glossy material, um, so this is the master material here. Uh, so you can see this has an albedo which is set to parameter. Um, you have the UV scale here which is set to parameter 2. Um, you have the roughness too. Oh, and the specular too. So this is a basic constant one. Uh, if I wanted to change the specular and see the result in real time, uh, basically I can convert this into parameter, name it specular. Okay. So you can obviously change all of these values inside the editor here but every time you press apply it's going to compile the shaders and that's going to take a lot of time so the way you do this is uh, put a bu bunch of constants here you multiply them with some nodes uh, and these constant one values are going to be um, parameters so once you do that save that You want to right click and create material instance. So I already have, actually I can do one here, yeah. I already have a bunch of few, 
and all of these are reading from the master material. So if I were to apply this material on this shelf, uh, you can change, so if you double click on it, you can change all of these parameters. That we later previously par parametered. So I can change the roughness of it here. So you can see this more roughness, you can see some kind of dust. I can change the scale of it. If I want something more specular, I can change also. So that is the the parameter that we changed earlier on. And I can also change the color. And all of this is done in real time. Instead of going inside the material editor and applying every time, this is a great way to have uh, instant feedback. And all of my materials Every single one of them is a material instance because it just allows me to have more control over it. So this this floor here uh, is also parametered and I have a bunch of different textures for it. So actually this is using a pack from the marketplace called the uh, 4K wood flooring. Yeah, 4K materials, wood flooring. Very, very good pack. I added a cavity map, uh, which gives a bit more detail. If I go inside here, yeah. It usually pops out the blacks. So it's a little feature, but I know it's very, it's pretty, pretty useful. So I've got some bit of roughness, bit of dust going. Actually, this is a roughness map, but if you slightly adjust it, it gives kind of this dust feel to it. And uh, yeah, so this is the floor. I won't go over too much on this because it's um, this is a pack that you can buy. Um, what else can I show you? Oh. Okay, so about the lighting, uh, many of you asked um, how to achieve a realistic light inside UE4. So the way I always do it is um, when I build the walls and I get the floor and the roof, um, I maybe use you know a couple of, put a couple of assets inside the room. I always use uh, this mode, uh, lighting only. And this always gives you a nice kind of overview of what your lighting is going to look like. Um, so that is always baked lighting. So, you know, put your stuff in, then use the build. I always go with uh, build lighting quality medium for having a quick overview. And here you can see the, the really nice effect of lighting. Uh, which has kind of this blue tint coming from the sky uh, and then here the, the light is bouncing back onto the wall that gives this warm feeling um, which is which is very nice actually I, I really like this lighting um, and all of this is just experimenting with uh, the directional light here uh, sorry it's not the sky directional lights here just by moving the values a bit getting the skylight into here to capture the sky information or HDRI you know it depends whatever suits you best it's it's all about experimenting and then I'll delete that one then the skylight portals, which are used for um, basically telling light mass 
okay, I need you to emit all the photons here. Uh, so they concentrate all the photons and emit it inside the room. So always keep these uh, light mass pools uh, on each opening. And the way you find those are if you type uh, light mass or even light, uh, you can find them here. Just drag them and basically we size them to the opening that you have. Uh, actually, I'm going to show you uh, some little tweak that I found on UE4 forums. Uh, it's called uh, the Skylight uh, Multi Bounce. So the way that works is if I go into the forums, uh, Skylight Multi Bounce UE4. So this is a little tool. Um, well, actually, it's a mod. It's a light mass mod uh, done by this guy, uh, Luo Shuang, I believe. Um, so this guy worked on um, on a mod uh, that is uh, using the skylight and emits uh, multiple bounces. And you can see the difference here is pretty amazing. So I've done a few experimentations with this light bounce, um, multi bounce skylight. Uh, as you can see here, there's comparisons, comparison between the default and his mod here. So there is a pl pretty clear difference um, inside. So I've tested that. Uh, and this is just a little mod that you, you know, override the Unreal Light Mass.exe. And I had way better results with it. It just has this ability to bounce multiple times. And I imagine that I had this very nice um, bounce on this wall here. Um, it does also uh, take a bit more time to calculate. Um, but I would, I would recommend doing it, uh, testing it out. Um, although, as I'm speaking right now, uh, version 4.18 is coming out pretty soon, and it's going to have um, this mod. Uh, it's not going to be his, but I know he's worked on it with the another guy from Epic Games and they have implemented this in uh, for version 4.18 so this is going to come and there's I believe there's no need to uh, try it out uh, with the new version because it's going to be implemented in but for 4.17 and previous versions if you want to still try it out uh, feel free to um, he has you know for 4.15 and 4.16 so uh, once you install the the mod, um, is that it's going to take into consideration the indirect lighting bounce. Uh, so I've put it to 10, and when I'm going to build that, it's going to calculate 10 skylight bounces. Uh, so it takes a bit of more time, uh, but the results are are pretty amazing. So yeah, these are my light mass uh, settings for here. Um, so I have a static lighting level scale 0.3. Uh, you can go even further down, maybe 0.1. Uh, I th I think I went with 0.1 actually, uh, just because I didn't build the build this on my laptop. Uh, so the indirect lighting bounce. If you are using the mod, again. 10 is a pretty good value, maybe you can go even higher. Um, I think I went with uh, 15 or even 20. That is if you're using the mod. If you're not using the mod and still with the default light mass, uh, you can go up to 100, right? Pretty high. Uh, in direct lighting quality, I used 5 and lighting smoothness uh, is always slightly lower than the lighting quality 
uh, I believe between 1.7 and 1 is good. So here, uh, use ambient occlusion. I used uh, baked AO for all of this, which gives me much nicer results than SSAO. Uh, again, this takes a bit more time because this has to generate AOs for for all the mesh, but you get much much nicer results. And that's about it for the lighting settings. So, yeah, there we go. Um, let me know in the comments if um, if I need to go over some stuff. Um, I try to keep this kind of short, even though it's very hard. I talk a lot about stuff, but there's so many, so many stuff uh, to talk about on this project. Uh, if you want me to go over some some details that you did not understand or some lighting information again I'm not an expert on lighting uh, I'm still learning uh, as, as from today um, but I'm happy to help you know some of you that have uh, some issues with uh, lighting or some issues with uh, textures or shading um, I'd be more, yeah, I'd be, I'd be very glad to, to help you out. So, uh, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed the, the tutorial and uh, let me know if um, if I need to do more. <laughs>